In 2011, North Americans used 1.25 times 10 to the 20th joules worth of energy. That is enough energy to power approximately 40 billion 100 watt light bulbs for an entire year. This energy was firmly generated through the burning of fossil fuels. However, technological advances are bringing photovoltaics to the market and providing clean and renewable energy sources to communities all around the world. Solar energy is one of the most readily available resources on the planet. The amount of energy generated from sunlight alone is massive. Approximately 3.2 times 10 to 20 joules worth of sunshine hit the Earth's surface in a single hour. To put things in perspective, that is more energy than was consumed by the U.S. over the course of an entire year. If the sun produces so much energy, then you must be wondering, why have we not converted to a fully solar power world? Unfortunately, solar technology at present is ridiculously inefficient. A large part of this inefficiency is due to the nature of the materials that make up photovoltaic cells. Photovoltaics are composed of two sheets of semiconducting material. Silicon is the most commonly used semiconductor for manufacturing solar panels. The top sheet of a silicon solar panel is often doped or infused with phosphorus impurities and the bottom sheet is often doped with boron impurities. Phosphorus has five, five valence electrons and boron has three valence electrons. Therefore, when added to silicon, which has four valence electrons, the phosphorus layer contains more electrons and the boron layer contains more holes. The phosphorus and boron doped layers are referred to as the n-type layer and p-type layer, respectively. A silicon nitride layer is also placed on top of these two layers because it is an anti-reflective optical coating. Silicon nitride allows light to pass through instead of being reflected away or absorbed. As light enters a solar panel, photons hit electrons within the panel and cause them to become excited and break off from their original atoms, leaving holes in their place. Electrons have a threshold, or band gap energy, which represents the minimum amount of energy necessary to knock electrons free from their atoms. So a photon's energy must be greater than an electron's band gap energy in order to break off said electrons from their atoms. If photons are absorbed within the junction between the N and P type layers of the solar cell, the photovoltaic electron hole pairs will remain separated by an electric field. This separation will allow them to go out and enter the circuit in order to generate electricity. When separate, a solar panel's two pieces of silicon are electrically neutral. However, when you put the two pieces together, an electric field is created. The field forms when the N and P-type panels come into contact. The donors in the phosphorus-doped N-type layer see all the acceptors in the boron-doped P-type layer and rush to recombine with them. This creates a negative electrical charge on the top plate and a positive electrical charge on the bottom plate, just thus generating an electric field in the junction between the two layers. Unfortunately, silicon solar panels are not extraordinarily efficient in terms of converting light into energy. This is mainly because silicon has an indirect band gap. In an indirect band gap, momentum is needed in order for an electron to jump from the valence band to the conduction band. This is not the case for materials with a direct band gap. Silicon does not easily absorb photons unless the panel is very thick because an indirect band gap does not absorb light very well. This property of silicon both raises the cost of the solar panels as well as decreases the efficiency of the amount of sunlight they can convert to electricity. On average, solar panels can convert less than 14% of incoming light waves into energy, and even a slight change to the angle at which they are placed can reduce their efficiency by up to 50%. Photovoltaics with higher efficiency rates than silicon do exist. Typically, these photovoltaics are made up of materials of direct band gaps. However, there are some big perks to using silicon in solar cells. For one, silicon is the second most abundant element in Earth's crust, therefore it is cheaper to make silicon solar panels than it is to make solar cells out of rare earth elements. Additionally, silicon also has a lower toxicity than many other semiconductors. There is also a large knowledge base on processing silicon because it is used so frequently in microelectronics. So hopefully now you understand that impurities, for example phosphorus and boron, when implemented properly make silicon the ideal material for use in solar panels. In addition to the implementation of impurities, solar panels can be made more efficient 
when the crystalline structure is monocrystalline and not multicrystalline. Monocrystalline silicon in solar panels is more efficient in energy conversion because of its well-organized crystal structure. Multicrystalline cells are much cheaper and easier to produce, but are less efficient because of grain boundaries, which block carrier flows and provide unwanted paths for electrons. Grain boundaries also create extra defect energy levels in the band gap and allow electrons to be more easily recombined since there are more surrounding atoms. Although further improvements on silicon could be made, other elements have the potential to surpass silicon. One such element is called gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide is a promising candidate for future solar panels because when doped it has a higher electron mobility, so electrons can travel up to five times faster in it than in typical silicon panels. Before doping, gallium arsenide has a high resistance against electrical current, making it a good insulator as well. Gallium arsenide also has direct band gap, making it much more efficient at absorbing light, whereas silicon has an indirect band gap that is less efficient at absorbing light. Although gallium arsenide seems like a much better option for solar panels when compared to silicon, its major flaw is that it can be dangerous to handle and very hard to process, making it much more expensive. With a little more research and some advances in processing techniques for gallium arsenide, the future of solar energy looks bright.